now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What My Line, brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the world's number one electric shaver, the Remington. Now, let's all play What My Line. And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now, one of the most amusing fellows on the stage or on television with his own private moderator, Jerry Mahoney and Paul Winchell. I'd like to say that I'm really delighted to be back here again. Yes, and I'd like to say that I... I, 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 I. <laughs> hey, who's the new chick? What do you mean? That's Dorothy Kilgallen. Really? Uh-huh. Well, where's Arlene? Well, she's going to sit over here tonight. You mean the girls are switching tonight? Uh-huh. Well, that's all right. You're just as cute as she is any time. <laughs> well, uh, go ahead. You're supposed to introduce Arlene. Oh, you are. Look at the same color hair we got in every team. <laughs> You're supposed to introduce Arlene. Now, look, you introduce what you like, and I'll take care of what I like. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, here's Jerry Mahoney's ex-girlfriend, but still number one in my book, Miss Arlene Francis. I'll win you back. Go ahead and try. <laughs> Later. <laughs> because now I have a very important announcement to make. The prodigal son has returned. Our ambassador of goodwill to Europe is back, and we welcome him with open arms, Bennett Cerf. Thank you. Thank you. It's awfully nice to be back. I understand that some of the most distinguished posteriors in America have kept this seat warm while I was away. <laughs> and while I was doing What's My Line in London, I learned the value to the show of our MC here, how much he means to the pace and the enjoyment of the show. And here he is, Mr. John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. We're up to our old tricks tonight and have some modifications, as it were, on the usual pattern. The panel will be very happy to know, I know, that they can now put on their blindfolds. Oh, not again, Jim. Yes, again, I'm Why sorry. Why don't they have them air-conditioned? Air-conditioned blindfolds will be supplied I next week. Take it off, I think I'm on. I've got a secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll also have our famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in... Yes, sir. Good, will you come in, first challenger, and sign in, please? ask you, first of all, if you're familiar with our scoring system, are you? Oh, just slightly. Well, fine. actually, it's very simple. Every time you can give them a proper no, we'll flip a card and ten of these no's, and you've won the game. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's let the folks at home and those who are with us here in the theater know exactly what your line is. When... So Panel, as you don't need to be told, there is an area of identification here which is required that you be blindfolded. It can be in costuming, in the origination of our guest, in the way and manner of writing. There are a great many areas, as a matter of fact, that might both confuse and enlighten you, so we've asked you to blindfold yourselves. We do want to be helpful, so we'll tell you that our guest is salaried, and we'll begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you a citizen of the United States? Yes. Were you born in America? Yes. Do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, do you... Would it be possible for you to do your work dressed as Paul and Bennett are dressed now? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Winchell. And there's some special type of uh, garb that you are wearing. Are you wearing this at the present time? Is no. That that was uh, tough. That's two down to go, Miss Francis. 
Oh, that's too bad, Paul. Yeah, before I started. Yes, if Jerry had been up here, you wouldn't have had such a bad time. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> um, but you do usually in your job wear some kind of special coverall or uniform or costume. Yes. Um, do you perform at a place where people can watch you? Yes. Do people watch you? At times, yes. <laughs> I think the answer to that would be yes, Miss Francis. Does he need watching? <laughs> that, uh, yes. There are a lot of fellows who think he does, I'll say that. Is there anything about your work that is entertaining? Yes. Uh, do people pay to see you? Yes. Uh, do you perform... Uh, are you a performer? Yes. I would think in the general use of the word entertainment, as you have just used it, we would have to admit that our guest was, in uh -huh. that sense, a performer, yes. Would you be seen on television? Yes. Uh, do you work for any special network? N no. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, do you ever do your, what, what you do in the great outdoors? Yes. Uh, would it be some form of athletic endeavor that you're famous for? Yes. Is it a uh, sport that is played mostly in the warm weather? Yes. Is I would say this, too, and I think our guest <laughs> would feel it was fair if I were to say that there are actually um, more than one challenger present. There is more than one challenger present. Rather. Oh, oh. Because I don't want you to get into the sport field and be misled on the basis that there is only one individual. This is leading me astray, I'm sure. Unless you've changed while I was away, John. I haven't. <laughs> uh, would the sport that you're in most often be baseball? Yes. Are you members of the same team? Yes. Is it one of the Metropolitan teams? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then you won today. <laughs> <laughs> With Miss Dorothy's position, I'll clarify that statement. All of our home teams here in New York lost on the baseball diamond today. Two was mine. Uh, even the ones that weren't home lost. <laughs> uh, well then, uh, are you from west of the Mississippi? Because my geography no. is so bad, maybe No. <laughs> yes, no. Five down and five to go, Mr. Winslow. Well, would it be important to determine what position you play? It's a team. Let's get the team This is first. a team? Either Cincinnati or... Oh, no, uh, well, actually, Milwaukee. there's more than one, Paul. That's that oh, I see. We, all we have indicated is to you, because oh, we want to be fair, that there is more than one challenger here, so that the specific position of one who might answer would uh, not necessarily be helpful. Hey, Lynch. What? What did he say? Who knows? <laughs> Well, then, uh, it's an outstanding baseball team, I imagine, and they're not from west of the Mississippi. Be careful about that Mississippian wine. Yeah, there's an awful lot of teams east of the Mississippi. <laughs> well, we're only two here. Cincinnati and Milwaukee. Cincinnati and Milwaukee are here. Pick one of those, and then I'll get the other. All right, I'll let you... How about Milwaukee? That's no. the boy <laughs> six down and far to go, Miss Francis. No! <laughs> Well, is it Cincinnati? Yes, it is Cincinnati. <laughs> Miss Arlene, this is going to shock you. You can take off your mask because we got the Cincinnati ball team, the ball team? here. <laughs> yes. Hey, you're <laughs> And uh, not only one of the greatest ball players in Cincinnati, but in these United States. Ted Klazuski has been their spokesman. A first baseman virtually without peers. Since Daly quit the diamond, not, well, no, I can't. <laughs> Where's but the I, manager? Where's the manager? Well, actually, uh, he's resting. <laughs> he's, he's resting. He needs the rest after winning. They won two today from Brooklyn, ten six and two to one. Two to one. Ted, I wonder if you would take over what I'm sure is a welcome chore and introduce your colleagues, would you? Yes, starting here, we have Johnny Temple, Wally Post, Gus Bell, Frank Robinson, Ed Bailey. In the back row, we have... Well, will you come out so yes. that our friends can see you in the back row, please? Ray Jablonski. And who's over in the corner? 
You missed Oh, me. Smokey Burgess. Smokey Burgess. Roy McMillan, Johnny Klipstein, and Joe Nuxall. And there's the Cincinnati Bowlers. Say is yes, Bennett. Special bow from the fellow who hit three homers in the first game. Yes, Mr. Ed Bailey. Mr. Ed Bailey, would you take a special bow for? Well, needless to say, we have had on many occasions reason as a group, my friends on the panel and myself, to feel that um, we had a signal moment on the program. Tonight, we think we've done it again. It's awful good of all you fellows to come, and we're grateful to you, and wish you lots of luck. And. Even though this is almost heresy being a New Yorker, good luck in the Thank you, Tom. <laughs> good to see you. Thanks very much. Well, I'm afraid... Me, I just wanted to ask you how you were going to split that $30 they won. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we'll make some adjustments, which I'm sure will bring everybody home happy. But I'm a little bit shocked. You did too well on that. Let's see what you can do with another challenger while I...